हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्ण हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण डियर डिवोटीज थैंक यू ऑल सो वेरी मच फॉर वेरी काइंडली जॉइनिंग दिस मॉर्निंग इफ यू आर इन द यूएस एंड इफ यू आर जॉइनिंग फ्रॉम इंडिया वेरी गुड नाइट आई होप योर डे वॉज कृष्णा कॉन्शियस थिंकिंग अबाउट द सुप्रीम लॉर्ड थैंक यू ऑल फॉर वेरी काइंडली willing to come together to hear about shri chaitanya mahaprabhu personally speaking it's a good form of purification for myself because whenever chaitanya mahaprabhu or whenever about krishna topics are spoken it's purification for the speaker because it's not just speaking but prior to speaking also the speaker does some homework so there's constant absorption so thank you all the devotees for encouraging me to kindly be absorbed in the pastimes of chaitanya mahaprabhu up until gaura purnima and the only hope is we are absorbed about chaitanya mahaprabhu not just until gaura purnima but beyond and lifetimes together our heart mind soul body everything should be just absorbed in the pastimes of shri chaitanya mahaprabhu and in fact the pastimes of chaitanya mahaprabhu naturally are so sweet krishna das kaviraj goswami says chaitanya charitai amritera sindhu करण मन तृप्त करे जाराइकबिंदुमी past times of chaitanya mahaprabhu is amritaira sindhu sindhu means ocean like we say hey krishna karuna sindhu krishna is considered the ocean of compassion ocean of karuna daya similarly chaitanya mahaprabhu chaitanya charit e amritaira sindhu past times of mahaprabhu it is like the ocean but not the ocean of this world why because the ocean of this world is very salty we would have seen that it is very very extremely salty but mahaprabhu's pastimes it is in the ocean which means it is huge length and breadth it's deep and at the same time it's amrit and amrit is naturally sweet we see in the eighth canto of the bhagavatam as to how there was a big fight between the demigods and the demons for what for amrit the churning of the milk ocean realistically speaking no one wanted milk and no one wanted any other products they wanted that amrit and that is why vasuki being the snake was being pulled back and forth back and forth back and forth only for that amrit mm-hmm. and finally we see the supreme lord had to come as mohini murti mohini avatar to bewilder and eventually the demigods were victorious so chaitanya mahaprabhu's pastimes are like that ocean but it is the ocean which is very sweet and what happens when we hear about that chaitanya mahaprabhu oh karna mana tript kare karna means the ear mana means the mind the ears the mind the heart the body the soul oh in fact everything becomes happy karna mana tript kare it is completely happy jar ek bindu kaviraj goswami says leave alone the whole ocean leave alone the whole ocean if you even just take one drop of that ocean oh then the person will be completely satisfied because realistically practically in one human life it is very difficult to drink the whole ocean maybe agaste muni did it in the past but for people like us it is very difficult ek manushya jeevan mein prabhupad ki yadi pustak dekhe to wohi hum khatam nahi kar pate geeta khatam nahi kar pate bhagavat khatam nahi kar pate to puri chaitanya charita mein to dur ki baat hai to isliye kaviraj goswami he states he says just by taking one drop from this ocean Oh, the ears are happy. The heart is happy. The mind is happy. The body is happy. The soul is happy. Oh, in fact, the whole person is happy. So that is our aim. We have come here to be transcendentally happy by speaking about Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And we see that Mahaprabhu's pastimes are so beautiful. When Shri La Prabhupada was there at Radha Damodar Mandir, at that time, after his Grahastha duties were done, and Prabhupada was a vanaprastha. 
it is very beautifully explained when Prabhupada was a Vanaprastha, the local Brajavasis in their memories, they say, Srila Prabhupada would go from house to house. You see how the Babaji's in Vrindavan, they do Madhukari. Madhukari means you beg. Jobi apne katori mein aaye, you accept it. Uh, you, don't, you don't work a 9 to 5 IT job. You don't have any of those incomes. But whatever Krishna naturally gives, you accept. Mila to mila, varna nahi. So Prabhupada would go house to house. He would do Madhukari. And he would knock the different different houses of Prajavasis. And Prabhupada would say, Nitai Gaur Hari Bol, Jai Radhe Sham. They say in the memories, Prabhupada would do that in Vrindavan in the 1960s. And whatever Prabhupada would get Madhukari, he would take it and he would come back to Radha Damodar Mandir. This is why we see when we go to Radha Damodar Mandir, that small hall or small room where Prabhupada stayed, Prabhupada says this courtyard or this temple of Jiva Goswami is my life and so because Radha Damodar are the deities of Jiva Goswami so he says this temple of Jiva Goswami oh it is my life and so so Prabhupada when he stayed there Prabhupada started with different different books Prabhupada started the Back to Godhead magazine in 1944 after the Back to Godhead magazine we see Prabhupada started writing some other books he would, Prabhupada would go to Delhi to get them printed. Because in those days, there was no BBT. There was no Bhakti without the book trust. No printing houses like the way we have it right now. Right now, it's so easy. Whenever we want, we have a PDF. We have Veda base. We can go out and get it printed. Most devotees have a printer in their home. So now things are very relaxed, very easy. But imagine 1944-1945, Prabhupada from Vrindavan, he would walk all the way to Delhi. He would write something to get it printed. He would go all the way till there. And that money also, whatever was used for printing, would come pretty much from Madhukari. Only so that Prabhupada knew that these back to God magazines are going to be eventually the life and soul of the Krishna conscious movement. Even now you see people are fond of magazines. If you see the materialist, if you go to their home, there will be magazines. If you sit in a flight, I've seen it so many times here in America. We sit in a flight. In the flight, you will have magazines. And different, different, it will be magazines related to Hollywood and sports and things like that. So people like to read magazines. People will flip pages. Whether it's the content, whether it's the paper quality or whatever it is. So Prabhupada was such a visionary. Near about 80 years back, Prabhupada realized that magazine is the way to go forward. People are going to like the magazine. So he started the Back to Godhead magazine. Because no one ever in the Sampradaya had thought about writing magazines, especially in English language. So, Prabhupada started the Back to Godhead magazine. Eventually, he did different, different other books. Then at one point, it is explained, Prabhupada started the Mukunda Mala Stotra. He started writing the commenting on the Mukunda Mala Stotra. And as Prabhupada started commenting on the Mukunda Mala Stotra, he finished first six verses. And then Prabhupada realized, oh, wait a minute. Mukunda Mala Stotra, some others can also do. But Bhagavatam is the need of the hour. Prabhupada thought, if I don't comment on Bhagavatam, then the world will be deprived of it. So Prabhupada kept Mukunda Mala Stotra to the side. And Prabhupada started Bhagavatam. Not just translating, but also commenting, giving purports, the Bhakti Vedanta purport. When Prabhupada was doing that, parallelly Prabhupada did some other books also. And there came a point when Prabhupada reached the 10th canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam. Then Prabhupada thought to himself, Oh, how about Chaitanya Charitamrit? Bhagavatam, how get it? 10th canto it is done. How about Chaitanya Charitamrit? Because the only scripture for the Gaudiyas is Chaitanya Charitamrit. Bhagavad Gita is meant for everyone. Bhagavatam is meant for the Vaishnavas. But Yedi Gaudi Samaj ke Vastavata se dekha jaye, Yedi koi esa granth ho jo keval Gaudi Samaj ke le ho, to ek Chaitanya Charitamrit hai. Mahaprabhu. The pastimes of Gauranga Mahaprabhu is solely the property. It's the treasure chest of the Gaudiyas. And now if that's not translated, how are we even Gaudiyas? If you don't know about Gauranga Mahaprabhu, how are we even Gaudiyas? Because he is the Lord for the Gaudiyas. He is the Yuga Avatar. So Prabhupada said, let's, let's do one thing. Let's keep Bhagavatam to the side. And now let's go to the Chaitanya Charitamrita. Now Prabhupada, 1974, after finishing first... Nine cantos and first 13, 10, 13 chapters of the 10th canto, Prabhupada goes back, goes to Chaitanya Charitamrita. And Prabhupada starts commenting and writing purports, taking Saraswati Thakur's 
Bengali commentary in Prabhupada translates that, adds his flavor, adds his bhakti vatan, the flavor to it, and starts commenting. Eventually, 1974, Chaitanya Charitamrita gets done. Then Prabhupada goes to nectar of instruction, nectar of devotion, teachings of Lord Kapila, teachings of Queen Kunti, signs of self-realization, different, different books. Prabhupada gets, uh, no, he keeps translating and commenting different, different books. Then Prabhupada realizes, oh, 10th canto is also equally important because it is the pastimes of Krishna and Brindavan. So now Prabhupada gets into the mood of Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami. Why? Because we see in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami comments on the full Adi Leela. He writes the full Adi Leela. After Adi Leela is then when the Madhi Leela starts. The first chapter of Madhi Leela, Krishna Das Gaviraj Goswami gives a complete synopsis of Mahaprabhu's pastimes. Now you see, no author will do it. Yadi is Jagat ki author ko dekhe, uh, whether it's Chetan Bhagat, Sidney Sheldon, uh, any of these authors that you take, no one gives synopsis of the whole book in between. This is not the format of the author. Or at the end, you do a complete conclusion. Right? But in the middle, if you do it, you just lose your audience because if you do it in the beach, everyone knows what's going on in the beach, no one will stay in So you lose your audience. But Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami, it is explained when he was writing Chaitanya Charita Amrit, he was very old. Ami vridha jaratura likhi te kana payakara mane ke chusmarana na hoi Na dekhi ya na yauni, na shuni ya shrabane, kabu likhi e bada desmai. When Kaviraj Goswami is writing, Kaviraj Goswami likhte hai, Ami vridha jaratura, he says, Ami vridha, I have become very old. Why? Because when Kaviraj Goswami was writing Charita Amrit, he was almost 85 years old. 85 years old. Generally, authors of this world, when they write, they're young. No one writes their first book at the age of 85. You never see that. No one authors the first book when they're in the fag end. Kaviraj goes for me because the Brajavasis, the locals, and Radha Madan Mohan instructed. Kaviraj goes for me at the age of 85, practically starts writing Chaitanya Charitamrit. Ami Vridha Jaratura. I am old, he's saying. Likhite karnapaya kara. He says, when I am writing my kara, hand, karnapaya, it is trembling, Kaviraj Goswami says. Jab likhte hai na, to heart, no, it shakes. Like in this world, it is called as Parkinson's. Hmm? The hand shakes. Difficult to even write. He says, I am getting old. I am having hunched back practically. My hand is shaking. Mane khichu smarana na hoi. He says, mujhe kuch smaran nahi hai. I am not able to remember anything. I am hearing but I am forgetting everything. Na dekhi ya ne. I am not able to see anything. Na shuni ya shravane. I am not able to hear anything. Tabu likhi ei bada vishmai. Still I am being empowered to write. Are Baba, this is astonishment. He says because I am not able to see. I am not able to write. I am not able to hear. My material senses are weak. But still, Madan Mohan is empowering me. The devotee Samaj, the Vaishnava Samaj is empowering me. Tabu liki e bada vishmai. This is great astonishment, he says. But the point here to be noted, dear devotees, is when Kaviraj Goswami is writing, he writes the Adi Lila, and now in Madhya Lila, he gives a complete synopsis. What is going to come next? What is Mahaprabhu going to do? Where he is going to take sannyas? Whom he is going to meet? He is going to meet Ramananda Rai. Sarvabhuma Bhattacharya, Prakashananda Saraswati, Rup Siksha, Sanatan Siksha, Antilila going to Gambhira, staying in Jagannath Puri, meeting Gadadhar Pandit. He writes everything. Full synopsis, he gives everything. Why? Because Kaviraj Goswami has this fear that he may not live till the time Antilila has to be written. Because he is old, he feels, Yadi mein jeevit nahi raha, to is jagat ko Antilila kaun dega? Who will give Antilila? Especially the pastimes of Mahaprabhu to this later half. Because Vrindavan Das Thakur, who is the author of Sri Chaitanya Bhagavad, 
वृंदावन दास ठाकुर इज नॉट डिफरेंट फ्रॉम व्यास देव कृष्ण लीला भागवत कहे वेद व्यास चैतन्य लीला व्यास वृंदावन दास मनुष्य रचित नारे ऐसे ग्रंथ धन्य वृंदावन दास मुखे बक्ता श्री चैतन्य आवर वृंदावन दास ठाकुर इज नॉट डिफरेंट फ्रॉम व्यास देव दैट सेम व्यास देव हू कॉमेंटेड ऑन वेरियस स्क्रिप्चर्स कम्स डाउन एस वृंदावन दास ठाकुर एंड ना वृंदावन दास ठाकुर इज इज सो When Vrindavan Das Thakur wrote Chaitanya Bhagavat, he was in his late twenties. And when Kaviraj Goswami writes Chaitanya Charitamrit, he is in his mid eighties. So this is what an Acharya can do. In his early twenties also, he can write a book. In his fag end also, he can write a book. And in fact, Chaitanya Bhagavat is more voluminous than even Chaitanya Charitamrit. It has about three thousand verses more than Chaitanya Charitamrit. and this was written by someone who was in his mid 20s or late 20s vrindavan das thakur now when vrindavan das thakur writes chaitanya bhagavat he practically comments on the first half of mahaprabhu's life whether it is in nadia making friends going to the school of gangadas pandit going to the school of advaita acharya and all the past times in nadia he is getting married to lakshmi priya getting married to vishnu priya up until the point of sanyas is what pretty much it is explained then you have a book called as chaitanya mangal which is mixed it will have past times from different different locations lochandas thakur who is the author of chaitanya mangal he will free flowing based on whatever mahaprabhu inspires he will write down different different past times then you have murari gupta's kadcha the first ever documented वर्क अब चैतन्य महाप्रभु वॉज बाय मुरारी गुप्ता मुरारी गुप्ता कड़चा और मुरारी गुप्ता महाकाव्य महाकाव्य ऑफ मुरारी गुप्ता वॉज रिटर्न आफ्टर महाप्रभु एंड इट वॉज पर्सनली रेड एंड अप्रूव बाय अद्वैत आचार्य एंड हरिदास ठाकुर एंड सो मेनी अदर्स सो ऑल दीज बुक्स प्रिटी मच टॉक अबाउट द अर्ली लाइफ ऑफ चैतन्य महाप्रभु और इवन अंटिल द टाइम ऑफ मैरिज बट हाउ अबाउट पास टाइम आफ्टर सन्यास What happened after Sanyas? What did Mahaprabhu experience in the land of Jagannath Puri? How was Mahaprabhu in the mood of Shrimati Radha Rani? Why was Gadhadhar not present in Gambira, but why was only Ramanand Rai and Swarup Damodar present? Why was Govinda sitting outside but no had no entry inside the Gambira when Mahaprabhu would be in the mood of Radha Rani? All this was practically not given by anyone. This is why Krishna's Kaviraj Goswami understanding that he is getting very old. in the madhyalila first chapter he writes a complete synopsis so that even if he is not alive the world is not pure of the past times similarly dear devotees shila prabhupad follows this mood of krishna das kaviraj goswami and after prabhupad has commented everything shila prabhupad writes a synopsis on the 10th canto of the shrimad bhagavatam like krishna das kaviraj goswami and he gives the old krishna book because prabhupad was also old he also had that fear that if he doesn't give complete 10th can to the world will be bereft so following in the mood of krishna das kaviraj goswami who gave a synopsis of the chaitanya charitamrit in the madhya leela our shila ac bhakti vedanta swami prabhupad does the same work of giving a complete synopsis of the 10th can of the shrimad bhagavatam in the form of the shri krishna book Shri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when he was there in Nadia, so the the way we will structure our discussion, dear devotees, is primarily we will be speaking from the Madhya Lila, and the reason is many devotees will have this question, Prabhu ji, I have never read the Chaitanya Charita Mrit, so how will I understand from the beginning? Isn't Adi Lila the first? हमने Adi Lila की पढ़ाई कभी की नहीं है यदि Madhya Lila से ले तो क्या हम समझ पाएंगे? The good thing about Mahaprabhu's pastimes is in the Madhya Lila, it is full storyline. The Adi Lila initial few chapters are extremely technical, and what often happens is when devotees start with Adi Lila, because it is so technical, they find it difficult to finish it. So middle of the discussion, people drop. Hey, are you? It's a very technical. Ho gaya. But on the flip side, I have seen, and also I have seen this personally, when you start with Madhya Lila. 
and you see the pastimes of Gauranga Mahaprabhu, there is some taste, some affinity towards the sweetness of Mahaprabhu. Now, once you get that little sweetness, now when you come back to Ajirila, you can bear the heavy technical understanding or technical Tattva Siddhanta because now you have seen some sweetness of Mahaprabhu in Madhilila. Now, because our time is limited, we have only 30 days for our discussion. Ideally, one human life is less to talk about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But because our we have a time constraint, we will start from the Madhilila. But before we go to Madhilila, we will see some bits and portions of the end of Adilila to see how Mad Madhilila starts. What happens in the end of Adilila and then we will go into uh, the pastimes of Mahaprabhu in Madhilila. The end of Adilila, dear devotees, we see it is very beautifully explained in the Chaitanya Charitamrita that our Nimayan, who was Nimay Pandit, he was called as Pandit because he was very argumentative. Oh, jhagda lute hamare Nimay. Oh, jhagda karte the. He would go and debate with everyone. He would go and argue with everyone. So Chaitanya Charitamrita Kaviraj Goswami explains Nimay Pandit. Eventually, there comes a point when his father, Jagannath Mishra. So, Mahaprabhu's parents are Sachi Mata and Jagannath Mishra. So, when Jagannath Mishra, Mahaprabhu's father, who is not different from Nanda Maharaj, Sachi Mata is not different from Yashoda Maya. When Mahaprabhu's father, that is Jagannath Mishra, when he leaves this world, our Nimai goes to Gaya. Gaya, as we know, is a place in India. He goes to Gaya to do the Pindadan. If you see, in Kaviraj Goswami Chaitanya Chaitanya, it's very beautifully written. Thereafter, Nimai went to Gaya to perform the Pindadan for his deceased father. There he met Srila Ishwara Puri and took Diksha, that is initiation, from him. Thereafter, he exhibited the signs of Prema. So when Nimai went to Gaya, he met Srila Ishwara Puri. He meets Srila Ishwara Puri, does the Pindadan, and from Ishwara Puri, he gets initiation. Diksha kale bhakta kare atma samarpan. Shastra explains Diksha is that time when the disciple does atma samarpan. Complete surrender unto his Shri Guru. Brahmande brahmite kono bhagyavan jeev. Hmm? Guru Krishna prasade vaya bhakti lata bij. After many many lifetimes dear devotees. Brahmande brahmite kono bhagyavan jeev. In this one Brahmanda, multiple Brahmandas. Kono Bhagyavanjiv. The amount of people who are very, very fortunate are handful. Why? Guru Krishna Prasade Bhai Bhakti Lata Bij. Those who get Guru get Krishna Kripa. Oh, then Guru places the seed of Krishna consciousness in their heart. Sripad Aindrabha would modify this verse little. Aindrabha would have his twist in everything. Sripad Aindrabha would say, Brahmande Brahmite Kona Bhagyavanji Guru Krishna Prasade by Vraja Bhakti Lata Abhij. He says real Guru means he will place the seed of Braj Bhakti in their heart. So he says who is that fortunate living entity who gets Sri Guru and that Sri Guru places the seed of Braj Bhakti. Guru Krishna Prasade by Braj Bhakti Lata Abhij he would say. And this is actually true dear devotees. Real Guru means he will place the seed of Braj Bhakti in their heart. Because Gaudiya Sampradaya means Braj Bhakti. It doesn't mean Vaikuntha Bhakti, it doesn't mean Dwaraka Bhakti, it doesn't mean Mathura Bhakti, no Mishrit Bhakti, it is unadulterated Vrindavan Bhakti, Praja Bhakti. And we see, we will see this, that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is coming to taste this Vrindavan Bhakti, Braj Bhakti. So Mahaprabhu takes initiation from Ishwara Puripad. And Ishwara Puripad gives him mantras, like we see we have Hare Krishna Mahamantra, when we get Brahman Diksha, we get Gayatri Mantras. Hmm? Traditionally, when Saraswati Thakur was present in the Gaudiya Mat, Diksha was always second initiation. Initiation means it was always second initiation. It was Prabhupada who started first initiation. And second initiation because Prabhupada understood when he was preaching, he was preaching to the hippies. And Gayatri Mantras cannot be given directly to the hippies. Hmm? There has to be some qualification. But Mahamantra, no qualification. Even a meat eater, Mlecha can chant Mahamantra. So Prabhupada kept first initiation, Hare Krishna Mahamantra. Chant for six months to one year. Then once you're serious in this, follow four regulatory principles, then second initiation. 
So these are things that Prabhupada started first and second. But traditionally, Diksha always meant Brahman Diksha, hmm? Gayatri mantras. So here, Ishwar Puripad gives him mantra. And our Nima starts chanting these mantras. And after Nima starts chanting these mantras, he becomes crazy. He goes back to Ishwara Puripad and says, Kiba mantra dila gosai, kiba tara bal. Japite japita mantra karela pagal. He says, Guru Maharaj, what mantra have you given me? Ishwara Puripad says, what happened? Kiba mantra dila gosai, kiba tara bal. What strength it has. Japite japita mantra karela pagal. For those who understand Hindi, Mahaprabhu is saying, I have become crazy. I have become pagal. What mantra is this? Ishwara Puripad looks at him and says, Good. He is chanting it this way because this is the power of the names of the Supreme Lord. This is the power of the mantras. So now Mahaprabhu chants these mantras. He is not just becoming crazy, transcendentally crazy, but now there is a change of heart. As we read, there are the exhibited the signs of prema. Now there is a transformation, dear devotees. So we will read a few lines and then we will discuss. So that's the format we will follow. For those devotees who have been part of our book reading earlier also, this is how we normally do. We will read a couple of lines, then we will discuss. Sometimes we will read two, three pages. Sometimes we will read one page. Sometimes we will read one paragraph. And sometimes it so happens that we will just read one line and throughout the conversation, we'll just be discussing that one line. So it is bhava anusara. <laughs> there is no format. Uh, however, Saitanya Mahaprabhu uh, inspires us. So we see here, after he gets initiation, there is a transformation. And now Nimai is no longer Nimai Pandit. He becomes Bhavuk Nimai. Because Bhav starts rising in this heart. Waves of Bhav for devotees who have done Bhakti Shastri. We see in Nectar of Devotion, Bhakti Rasamrata Sindhu, we have Bhav Bhakti. And very beautifully, Prabhupada explains in, in depth, in nice technical depth. This is where Prabhupada would say Bhakti Shastri is very important. And these four books are especially very important for the Gaudi Vaishnavas. To have a firm foothold on the Sampradaya and a firm, strong foothold in Shastra. Upadesha Amrit, that is Nectar of Instruction. The Bhagavad Gita, you have Nectar of Devotion and then the Isha Upanishad. So here, after the transformation was seen, now Nimai comes back to Nadia. And when Nida, Nimai comes back to Nadia, he meets the brother of Srivas. Srivas Pandit had, you know, they were total four brothers. Srivas Pandit, Sri Ram Pandit, Sri Pati and Sri Nidhi. Four brothers. So he meets one of the brothers of Srivas Pandit. And in the house of Srivas, it is explained in the courtyard, there would be a jasmine tree. So many times these devotees would pluck jasmine flowers for their morning puja. So in the morning when the brother of Srivas was plucking jasmine flowers, Nimai came there. And when Nimai came there, the brother of Srivas asked him, Hey Nimai, where were you? And we didn't see you for such a long time. Nimai said, Oh, I went to Gaya to do the Pindadan. And there I met Om Vishnu Pada, Shthotara Shata, Shri Srimad, Srila, Ishwara Puri Maharaj. Actually, this is, dear devotees, this is the way we address our Guru Maharaj. We never, it is, Hari Bhakti Vilas explains, we never address our Guru Maharaj without Shri or Shri Mad or Om Vishnupad. These are designations that always need to be given before we utter the name of our Guru Maharaj. We don't just say the name. Shastra clearly explains whenever we take the name of our Guru Maharaj, if we are initiated or even if we are aspiring. Like for Prabhupada, which is Srila Prabhupada. Likewise, when we say Prabhupada, he would, for his Guru Maharaj, Srila Prabhupada would say, Om Vishnu Pad, Ashtotara Shata, Shri Srimad, Nitya Lila Pravishta, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. Prabhupada would give a big introduction and then he would take the name of his Guru Maharaj. This is Sampradaya Deva devotees. We can say Shri Srimad, Srila, and then our Guru Maharaj's name, or Om Vishnu Pad, and then our Guru Maharaj's name. But not just name. This Hari Bhakti Vilas and other Shastras clearly explains that this is not proper etiquette. And even whenever we, before we start speaking, we always meditate on our Guru Maharaj. 
because whatever we are whoever we are it is because of him he has accepted us into the path of krishna consciousness and we see this is what exactly suta goswami does in the bhagavatam when the six questions are asked by the sages so now we are going to the first canto of bhagavatam you see in the first canto of the bhagavatam when suta goswami was asked by the sages of naima sharanya suta goswami had heard the conversation of shukadev goswami and parikshit maharaj and like a cloud he went all the way to naima sharanya and he offered all the nectarian waters that he had heard in that conversation suta goswami is the embodiment of guru tattva dear devotees and he is like that cloud who heard the conversation and went all the way to naima sharanya to give it this is why we say or this is why we compare shri guru to the cloud samsar dava nalalidha loka pranaya karunna khana ghanatvam praptasya kalyana gunaranavasya vande guru shri charanaravindam shri guru is like that cloud vishwana chakravarti thakur explains we are living a life that is like blazing fire material life is like blazing fire shila prabhupad one time he said this is a very good it's a very good caption it's a very good instagram caption or a facebook caption shila prabhupad one time he said that spiritual life may be difficult but material life is impossible prabhupad said spiritual life may be difficult it may be difficult to get up in the morning it may be difficult to chant a round yes but material life is impossible prabhupada said so better is spiritual life even though it's difficult so suta goswami demonstrates guru tattva but why are we talking about suta goswami because suta goswami we see when shaunaka dirishi asked the questions suta goswami doesn't start answering them directly first he gives his respect to his guru maharaj hmm? he gives his respect he says oh, whatever i have heard ಸ್ವಾನುಭಾವಖಿಲಂ ಶ್ರುತಿ ಸಾರಮೇಕಂ ಅಧ್ಯಾತ್ಮ ದೀಪ ಪತಿತೀರ್ಥಿತಮೋಂದಂ ಸಂಸಾರಿ ನುಣಯ ಪುರಾಣ ಗುಹ್ಯಂ ತಂ ವ್ಯಾಸ ಸೋನು ಉಪಯಾಮಿ ಗುರು ಮುನಿ ಕ್ಯಾಂಟೋ ಒನ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಟೂ ಟೆಕ್ಸ್ ತ್ರೀ ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ ಭಾಗವತಂ ಈಸ್ ಎಸ್ ಓ ವಾಟ್ ಎವರ್ ಐ ಎಂ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಟು ಸ್ಪೀಕ್ ಈಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ಐ ಹರ್ಡ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಮೈ ಗುರು ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಈ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ಸ್ಪೀಕಿಂಗ್ ಸೊ ಸಿಮಿಲರ್ಲಿ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಪ್ರಾಪರ್ ಎಟಿಕೇಟ್ ಯುವರ್ ಡಿವೋಟಿಸ್ ವೆನ್ ಎವರ್ ಯು ಸ್ಪೀಕ್ ವಿ ಗಿವ್ ಫುಲ್ ರೆಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಟು ಅವರ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರು so here nimai he said oh i met my guru maharaj shri shri mad ashtottara shata om vishnu pachila ishwara puri guru maharaj and then brother of shiva said oh what happened after that and when nimai started speaking he got so choked up he couldn't speak anything dear devotees he couldn't he couldn't speak anything tears started flowing from his eyes he got completely choked up and he looked at the brother of shiva and said please come to the house of shuklambar varmachari i will meet you there and him i was so choked up he couldn't speak anything so the brother of shrivas when he saw this he was traumatized because the nimai that he knew was argumentative the nimai whom he knew was debating but here nimai started crying tears were just flowing from his eyes so much so that his cheeks were completely wet when the brother of shrivas went inside and narrated this to everyone else they were all surprised they left all their puja to the house of shuklambar parmachari because they wanted to know what is this transformation that nima is experiencing all of them assembled in the house of shuklambar parmachari eventually when nima entered the house he saw everyone with tilak he saw everyone with kanthi when mahaprabhu saw everyone tilak and kanthi he was reminded of krishna chaitanya mahaprabhu looks at all of them kaviraj goswami says looking at all of them mahaprabhu starts crying like anything ha ha krishna tumi gela ka thi ha ha krishna tumi gela ka thi oh krishna where did you go where did you go where did you go and he starts crying mahaprabhu breaks down and the house of shuklambar brahmachari it was not a mansion it was not a penthouse it was a very it was a thatched 
thatched roof. So there were bamboo sticks that were holding the roof. That was holding, that was the supporting blocks of the house. Mahaprabhu held to one of those bamboo sticks. And now because he was crying, he lost consciousness. And holding that bamboo stick, Mahaprabhu falls down. And as Mahaprabhu falls down, the whole that roof practically comes down crashing. And Mahaprabhu is crying and completely unconscious. And the associates of Mahaprabhu, they are thinking, what is happening? We called him to have a discussion. But before that, the house is gone completely. And now they start reviving Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. They start chanting Hare Krishna Mahamantra. They start putting water on Mahaprabhu and they start reviving. They are chanting the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. They are chanting the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. But now what happens? All the associates are all ecstatic. They are all pure devotees. Advaita Acharya and the brothers of Srivas, Shuklambar Brahmachari, all of them are so ecstatic. Now, what had happened is they were chanting the Mahamantra to get Mahaprabhu back to consciousness. But eventually what happened is by the power of Mahamantra, all of them became unconscious. In order to wake up one person, remaining five also became unconscious. And all of them fell to the ground. Now there was a bigger problem. This is what Mahamantra does, dear devotees. This is the power of Mahamantra. This can happen to all of us also. When the sadhaka is sincere and chanting and when it is without offenses, this is the ultimate benefit that he can obtain. So this is what Kaviraj Goswami is writing here. Thereafter, he exhibited the signs of prema. It is just one line. But look at the depth. We have been talking for like good amount of time now. Now when Mahaprabhu falls down to the ground, associates also fall down. Finally, they all regain consciousness. When they regain consciousness, they all get up. And everyone is looking at Nimai. Now there is pin drop silence. Hmm? Like in English, you say pin drop silence. The origin is Chaitanya Charitamrita. Pin drop silence. Actually, there was pin drop silence. No one was speaking anything. But in that room, dear devotees, even though no one was speaking anything, Mahaprabhu could hear sobbing. Like you say in English, sobbing. <laughs> like when you cry, you sob. So, so Mahaprabhu could hear some sobbing. And Mahaprabhu looked around. He couldn't see anyone. He looked at Shuklambar Brahmachari and said, I can hear someone sobbing, but I don't see anyone here. Is there anyone in the house who is not present in front of me, but I can still hear sobbing? Shuklambar Brahmachari looked at Nimai and said, Yes, my dear Lord. There is someone in the house who is not present in front of you, but is actually seeing you. Nimai said, Who? Who is that person who is actually sobbing? Dear devotees, behind the door in one of those rooms, Gadadhar Pandit was present. And through the eye hole, Gadadhar Pandit was seeing everything that was happening, but he didn't come inside. He was seeing everything. And when everything settled down, Gadadhar was crying and sobbing so much that Nimai could hear it in the next room. Why was Gadadhar crying? Because Gadadhar Pandit always wanted Nimai to be a devotee. He didn't like when Nimai would argument, when he would do debates. The argumentative nature of Nimai, Gadadhar didn't like. Srivas and Gadadhar were the two people who didn't like when Mahaprabhu even battled Keshav Kashmiri. The whole of Nadia was happy except these two people. They said, Nimai, this is not the purpose of Shastra to debate and argue. So when now Nimai's transformations were seen, the most happy was Gadadhar. Gadadhar was crying and sobbing like anything behind the door. Mahaprabhu slowly went and he opened the door. And Gadadhar Pandit was sitting down and like a child cries, Gadadhar Pandit was crying. And actually Gadadhar was young because Nimai and Gadadhar all pretty much same age in Nadia. Gadadhar was crying. Nimai looked at him and said, Gadadhar, what happened? And actually Nimai could understand. Nimai looked at Gadadhar. He said, my dear Gadadhar, you always wanted me to become a devotee. You always wanted me to remember Krishna. 
you would always encourage me to speak and hear about Krishna, but I was using Shastra for debating, for Tarka. Hmm? I was using Shastra for all these things. But because of your prayers, Gadadar, I met my Guru Maharaj Shila Ishwara Puripad. And because of his mercy, I got to know something about the scripture, something about Sri Krishna. My dear Gadadar, can you teach me Shastra? Can you please pray for me? Can you please bless me so that I can continue my search for Sri Krishna? Kaha Mora Prana Nath Murali Vadan Kaha Jao Kaha Pao Brajendra Nandan. Ha Ha Rasa Bilasera Nidhi. Our Chaitanya Mahaprabhu one time was sitting on the street and he was crying, remembering Krishna. So Gadadhar Pandit came to him and Gadadhar Pandit asked him, My dear Lord, what happened? Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, Oh, I am not getting Krishna. I am doing everything, but I am not getting Krishna. Gadadhar Pandit said, My dear Lord, it is very easy. Krishna is there in your heart. He is there in your heart. No need to go outside. At that time, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, in the mood of Hanuman, he tried to rip open his chest. Just like you see in Ramayana, Hanuman tries to, not tries, but Hanuman actually does it. He rips open his chest and he shows the whole Sita and Ram. Similarly here, Nima starts scratching. Say, where is Krishna? Where is Krishna? Ha ha, Rasa Vilasera Nithi. Where is the hero of the Rasa dance? And Gadadhar said, my dear Lord, have patience. Krishna will give himself to you, but have patience. Gadadhar started speaking Upadesha Amrit. Utsaha Nishchaya Dhairya. Mahaprabhu, have patience. The Lord will give himself to you very soon. And in this way, we find Gadadhar was very, very instrumental in helping Chaitanya Mahaprabhu or helping Nimai become from someone who is argumentative and debating this mood to the mood of very humble Krishna conscious devotee. What happens later, dear devotees, we will see in our discussion tomorrow. So all that we discussed was three lines as to how Nimai goes to Gaya, performs Pindadan, he meets his Guru Maharaj Shila Ishwara Puripad, and how he exhibits the signs of Krishna Prema. What happens later, we will see from the pages of Chaitanya Chirtamath in our discussion tomorrow. Same time, same place, same Zoom link. Unfortunately, the same speaker. But thank you again, dear devotees, for very kindly joining. We will have 30 to 45 minutes every day based on the flow of the discussion. Thank you all very much.